Joan. Joan started off just sort of being a device also. Joan was just supposed to be Peggy's, um, just in the pilot, just some woman who worked there who was going to introduce Peggy to the office and introduce us to the office. But she's kind of become the flip side to, I mean, there's obviously more than two dimensions to a woman's possible experience, and certainly Betty is the, the third part of it. Um, but I think Joan is great because to me, she expresses to me the strongest part of myself, the most, she's the most rigid and judgmental and self-confident, but at the same time she's wrong about everything, but she's still sticking to it and she lives by her decisions. And there's a wisdom there, but there's also a kind of like, there's a cruel reality that keeps smacking her in the face and she keeps ignoring. And it's kind of like if you believe in something and you do everything you're told. This is what I've heard a lot about that generation, and I kind of grew up with it too. I mean, I don't think it was that different. That if you believe in this and you do everything you're told, it, if you do X, Y, Z, you will get this. And it didn't happen. And Joan is still, you know, supporting that mythology to other people, even though it hasn't happened for her. And I just love her, I love her sexual confidence. You know, part of me wanted to say that people were having sex back then, because everyone was shocked by it. Oh, it wasn't like that. I don't know, people didn't do it, have it, people didn't have premarital sex. I'm like, okay. Because people are so different, you know? You know, read the Bible, that's all I can say. It's not changed. And I wanted her to be that person who was kind of unapologetically a vixen because that actually was an, a fairly recent archetype. You could be an aggressive, a sexually aggressive woman if you just reeked of knowledge and confidence. Of course, it's, it hasn't been great for her, but 